Good morning, everybody. We're going to continue in Romans. We pick up a chapter 6 today, starting at verse 1. So let us know when you arrive. Let us know how you're doing. We're getting some heavy rains this morning here in central Wisconsin. And it's been a long time since we had heavy rains. So as we open up, um, I'll read through these verses. We'll talk about what they mean. We'll dissect it verse by verse. And we'll just wait for a few people here to join us. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Romans 6, you may have a, a heading that says, Dead to sin, alive to God. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. All right, there's our passage for today. In verse 1, Paul says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? What he's saying is, are we to just continue sinning freely since there is grace? Do we really need to worry about curbing sin at all? Do we just sin freely? In verse 2, he says emphatically, by no means, right? By no means should we abuse grace. It's very clear, okay? He says, how can we who died to sin still live in it? How can you put off the old self if you still live in it? How can you even claim to have a new self if you're totally living in the old self, right? So that is what he's laying out. Verse 3 then, he says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death, okay? So theologically, baptism connects us with Christ's work clothing us in his righteousness, okay? So Jesus paid the penalty of our sin, and his work is applied to us in baptism, okay? And we're going to talk about how as we read verse 4. Verse 4, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So as Jesus was covered by the earth in his burial, okay, there's symbolism there, we're buried in baptismal water. And then we're also united with Jesus in his resurrection as we emerge from the waters of baptism. Okay, so Jesus went into the earth, came out in baptism, we go under the water, we come out new. Okay, and so as Jesus rose, when we come out of baptism, we're united with Jesus in his resurrection. And that's awesome to think about because our eternal life has already started for those who are baptized, right, in Christ. That when we rise from those waters of baptism, we have entered into eternal life. Our life doesn't stop now. Luther says this, he says, Imagine there was a doctor somewhere who understood the art of saving people from death, or even though they died, could restore them quickly to life, so that they would afterward live forever. Oh, how the world would pour in money, like snow and rain. No one could find access to him because of the throng of the rich. But here in baptism, there is freely brought to everyone's door such a treasure and medicine that it utterly destroys death and preserves all people alive. That is great perspective, isn't it? Everybody's trying to find the fountain of youth. Jesus already offers it. It's free. It's something that the rich can't buy. It's through our baptism. It's through our faith, right? It's through Jesus' saving work in his death and his resurrection. Okay, verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Okay, so Paul continues with that thought. Um, his death was on the cross. Our death to the old self is in baptism, which gives the benefits of his work on the cross. And then new life has already begun for us. And then verse 6. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Okay, the old self that's drowned in baptism, that's our old sinful nature. Okay, and sin is brought to nothing, Paul says. It doesn't mean that we don't sin anymore, but it loses its destructive power over us. 
If we're in Christ, sin cannot destroy us, okay? But then we're to go on not just living in it. The law is still there and the law still has a purpose. The law is necessary so the old self can be subdued against its will because we're still going to fight against the old self. We're going to still fight against our sinful human nature, but the law helps us to curb it, okay? Um, so we don't just throw out the law. We don't just sin freely. That's really the big point of this passage. Do we just abuse grace? No. Um, Luther actually has an interesting phrase where he says, sin boldly. And sometimes people misunderstand that, okay? When he says sin boldly, it means that when we do fall into sin, and I say fall into sin because it's falling into our old self, okay? It's falling into the sinful nature. It's giving into the sinful nature. But when we do that, he says sin boldly because we can have so much confidence that God sees us no differently because we're still redeemed. We stand redeemed. We stand with the work of Christ in his death and resurrection. That's why he says sin boldly. It's not to say sin more. It's not to say when you're sinning, just go all out. No, he's just saying when you sin, you can be bold that you are still forgiven when you repent and you're seen no differently because we're covered in Christ's righteousness, okay? Now, the other side of that is um, we can abuse that and sin boldly and freely, and it hurts our relationship with Jesus, right? It hurts our faith. It hurts our kingdom impact because people see our lives and it looks no different, okay? So that's not what we're called to do at all. You know, let, let's say give you an example. You're in a really difficult financial situation and you reach out to a parent and they bail you out. Does that mean you should do it all the time? Does that mean you should just keep going to that well? Um, and what will that do to you, right? If you just keep going to that well, what will that do to the relationship with your parents? What will that do to the power of the gift the next time, right? It cheapens all those things. It hurts the relationship. It hurts your ability to move forward. It's the same way when we just sin without curbing it, when we just sin without regarding the law, when we sin just because we know that there's grace. We don't look like Christians anymore. We can't say that we have an authentic relationship with Jesus who died for our sins. We're just abusing that gift. And so the law is helpful and necessary to show us what sin is, okay? And then we have confidence that rising to life in our baptism our new self can work for the kingdom and work against that sin. And yes, the old self is still going to work against us. And sometimes we're not going to resist it. We're going to fall into sin. We're going to fall into temptation. But we turn to the cross and we can boldly be confident that we are forgiven because of Jesus' work. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you so much for your work on the cross, Lord. Let us never cheapen that work on the cross by just sinning, knowing that grace is waiting for us on the other side. We know that that cheapens our relationship with you. We know that that doesn't show the world that we live differently, Lord. Instead, let us be inspired by your word, by your law, by your grace to live boldly for you so that our lives look different and so that people around us see those lives and are drawn to the gospel. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's blessings, everyone. Have an awesome day. And we'll be live again tomorrow. Take care.